Hello fellow hunters, JBiz Hunts back with another video. This time it's about decoding how respawns work. This video will center around the actual game mechanic data from the game files itself that goes into respawns within the Hunter Call of the Wild. This is the second video and follow up to how respawns work. I was honestly hesitant to ever make this video as I'm sure there is going to be some backlash in the comments and the community after this video is released. The data in this video comes from a post that I came across in a Facebook group almost two years ago, where a fellow player delved deep into the game's program files to uncover just how the RNG system really works. The admins of that group were quick to delete the post, but not before I was able to take a few screenshots to really reread it and really dive into this myself through my own gameplay. Let's break it down and see how it impacts the way we grind for great ones and manage our herd through herd management with how the respawns work. Before we dive in, I want to make something very clear. I'm a console player on Xbox and I have not modded my game or accessed its files. I don't even know if it's possible to access files on a console. The information I'm about to share comes from another player who posted their findings online after digging into the game's program files themselves. To respect their privacy, I'll keep them anonymous. This isn't my own data, but I find it fascinating and believe it makes a lot of sense based on playing this game since 2017 release and experiences that I have with herd management grinds. I'm sharing it because I think it could help explain some of the mechanics behind respawns and why strategies like herd management work so well. So don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here to share what I've learned. The player said he didn't just learn by playing Hunter Call the Wild like the rest of us. No. This guy dug into the game's program files on his PC to uncover the mechanics behind animal respawns and what he found. It's absolutely fascinating, and this is the steps that he took to find it. First, he extracted the game's files into a readable format using a common program you can find online. Once he had access, he stumbled upon a file titled Animal Scoring. That's where things got interesting. Within this file, he noticed a variable called Weight Deviation. Now, if you're not familiar, variables are a critical part of how video games work. They're like storage units that hold information, and this info can change during gameplay. Think of things like health and inventory, or in Hunter Call of the Wild, the randomness behind respawns. One common use of a variable is randomization. This allows games to generate new loot, enemies, or in the Hunter Call of the Wild, respawns, and in this case, weight deviation was the key variable controlling that randomness. Here's the formula he uncovered for how new weight are assigned to animals during their respawn process. It's max weight minus the minimum weight multiplied by 15%. But that's not all. He also discovered that each animal in the game has a unique identifier, a number assigned when the population file is created. Think of this like a gamer tag for animals. This identifier doesn't change even when the animal is harvested and respawns. It always keeps the same tag. Using this knowledge, he then created a program to track these animals in real time while he played. He used a debugger to monitor changes behind the scenes and tested this system using moose as his target species. For reference, moose have a maximum weight of 620 kgs and a minimum weight of 400 kgs, excluding great ones, of course. The debugger notified him whenever something happened to an animal that he was tracking, like when it was harvested as an example. Here's what he observed step by step. One, he saw the weight deviation for moose, which is 33, which is calculated as 620 minus 400 multiplied by 15%. Two, the animal's original weight was displayed. Three, a random number was generated between the weight deviation for the moose, which is always a 33, to as low as negative 33. So the number that's generated is always between those two numbers. Four, that random number that was generated was added to the animal's original weight that was harvested. Five, a new weight was calculated and assigned to the animal. Six, this updated weight replaced the old weight in the system for that animal's identifier tag. Seven, the new animal was saved into the population file, ready for respawn. Eight, the new animal replaced the old one, but kept the same identifier number. Once he understood the process, he decided to experiment with this. He doubled the weight deviation to 66, and the results were, let's just say, unexpected. With the new weight deviation, he noticed something surprising. He started getting diamond moose much faster. But it wasn't all good news. 
it worked both ways. A harvested diamond could get a negative random weight applied, and he noticed that a level 5 moose dropped to level 3 because of the large variation he created, which is as big as a negative 66 kg drop in weight. What does this all mean? If you harvest the same animal and get unlucky with RNG, the random number generation, hitting the worst possible negative on weight, you could see a significant drop in animal level. For example, a level 5 max weight moose could potentially downgrade to a level 3 moose within just 2-3 to three harvests of that specific animal tag. While RNG is random, it operates within a certain limit. Each animal in the Hunter Call of the Wild has a maximum range for weight and score. The randomness lies in the variation between the weights of the original animal and its future spawns. The game's mechanics are weight-based. Once the weight of an animal is generated, it sets the stage for everything else. Weight determines level. Level determines the available antler variations available at that level. True Racks then randomizes the antler selected, and then fur type is assigned based on a percentage chance of what type of fur it's going to have. So the big question, what does this mean for Great Ones? The original poster of this theory didn't explain how the mechanics work for Great Ones, only for diamonds. However, this insight answered a lot of questions for me about herd management and why it's effective. We know that Great Ones are the largest animals in the game. For comparison, a max weight diamond moose is 620 kgs. A max weight Great One moose is 700 kgs. That's an 80 kg difference. If the formula remains the same, the weight deviation for the moose might increase from a 33 to a 45. Does this impact Great One spawns? It's hard to say. Since weight predicts level, and Fable 10 is technically a level, I assume the developers had to adapt existing mechanics for Great Ones without breaking the game engine, which is somewhat dated compared to newer titles like The Angler. That being said, this entire theory originates from a long since deleted Facebook post in a Hunter Call the Wild fan group. Is there any truth to this theory, or is it just fan fiction? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Want to see more? Subscribe to the channel. And as always, fellow hunters, happy hunting.